Hi everyone, I'm Elise and you're watching Elise in Wonderland and today I'm gonna tell you my top five of the most pretty snorkeling places because Curacao sure does know how to show off their underwater world so let's dive into it. Alicia Wonderland, traveling the world and the right information for your next destination. Curacao has such clear blue water that any beach that you will go to have a lot of fun things to see there's a lot of fish there's coral when i went to curacao before that i had never gone snorkeling at first i was actually pretty scared of uh, ocean life like the fish and stuff when they're that close to you and they come right at you Eesh. but you get used to it they don't bite at all like they don't do anything they just swim around you and they don't have a care in the world i kind of hate to admit this but I kind of feel like I need to tell you this because it can come in handy and it was my first time snorkeling ever so that's why I didn't know about this but I was seriously struggling to get underwater because I was immediately pulled back to the service but I learned um, that you have to dive in vertically so actually put your face down first and the weight of your body will push you down which will help. And I feel really stupid now, but well, at least you know, so you won't have to struggle with that. Anyways, let's get into the video. Here's my top five snorkeling places on Curacao. All right, on number five, I actually put Klein Curacao, which is a small island that's also part of Curacao. It actually, Klein Curacao means small Curacao. There is a lot of sea life there. It's really gorgeous there can be turtles there I actually did not go there myself but I heard from a lot of other people that it definitely has some pretty snorkeling sites and there's a lot of fish there so I did not go there myself so I kind of feel like it should not be my top five but it's worth mentioning so that's why I put it at number five but I don't have any footage of it so that's unfortunate but if you have been there please let me know your experience in the comments down below because I would love to know because I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get to go there but yeah let's continue on to number four all right number four is the blue room cave so on Curacao there's actually a cave in one of the cliff walls. There's a lot of tours that go there. One that's worth mentioning is Captain Goodwill. Another one that goes there, I think it's on Wednesday and Saturday, is Go With Go West. And I actually ended up going with a pelican tour. So almost like you're in a swimming pool with lights under it. So if you look at the ceiling, it becomes blue as well. Now the story about here is, back in the days, I don't know if you guys know, Curacao used to be a underwater volcano. That's how the island came. Now, then the water sea level started dropping. There was like a bubble inside the magma. There was this. Now when the sea level dropped, the opening broke open. And that's how we got the opening like this. When you look at the sea, you can see corals, prints of corals. So you know it was all underwater. But you can actually also go there for free, but that means that you have to walk a little bit. Um, definitely do not do this by yourself because it can be kind of dangerous and you need to jump in the water from uh, the cliff. I did not do this myself. If you have done this, please let me know what your experience was. I feel like you do kind of need to be in a good shape to climb back up the cliff. But you can also swim to the nearest beach but that's still a little bit of a swim though yeah so to walk to the blue room you need to park your car at santa cruz and then you can walk it's about a 20 to 25 minute walk and uh, you will pass boca santa cruz which is a really small kind of a beach uh, ish the sand there is a lot darker and from there you continue walking you finish that entire road then you come to a T splitting and you go to the left and actually there should be a sign there that tells you that the blue room is that way 
and then uh, from there you can jump in the water. You can also climb down the rocks because there are supposed to be footholds uh, on the side of the cliff so you can climb back up the cliff. If you do not feel like that's safe, you can also swim back to Boca San to Peru. But yeah, that is a little bit of the swim. So yeah, if you have done that, please let me know your experience. The blue room itself is really pretty. And there's a lot of fish there that swim right around the entrance. The entrance, like, you kind of want to swim underneath the rocks because there's about like 20 centimeters. Uh, space between the rocks and the water so you kind of just want to keep your head above your head to prevent from bumping your head uh, against the rocks or just swim underwater that might be the safest way it's not that far actually um, it's only like a meter and a half and then once inside um, the ceiling will be a lot higher and there's this beautiful blue glow that is created because um, the sunlight that comes into the room uh, reflects off of the water and that creates that blue glow which the name comes from which is pretty awesome yeah so that's number four uh, number three is actually a really unknown place but i kind of discovered this through my work because it's really close to my job and it's right behind the sea aquarium actually so when you're at mumbo beach you can swim under the bridge that goes to the sea aquarium with the big chain on it you keep swimming and actually when you look through the fence on your right you might actually see the dolphins that are at the sea aquarium but when you keep swimming uh, even further and past the rocks be really careful though because the first time I did this, this the ocean was kind of wild the waves were kind of high and I actually scratched my leg open on some burning coral which is really painful and it totally freaked me out um, so please be careful and actually the second time that I went there right through those rocks there was this snake like fish we call it a murena i'm not quite sure what the word is in english but please let me know in the comments below but yeah it's this creepy thing and i actually did not realize that i was there i was just filming the little group of fish and i was like oh that's nice and then all of a sudden i noticed it and that totally freaked me out as well so that was the second entrance and i've only actually been there twice so yeah both them were pretty memorable but once you cross those rocks and you actually enter like the open ocean there is a lot of gorgeous reef there and a lot more variation in the types of fish that swim there as well which is pretty awesome that's why i put it on my number three let's go to number two and number two is going to be the tugboat all the way on the east side of the island there's actually a sunken tugboat which is really cool to to go to you can actually drive all the way to the beach and from there it's about i would say a five minute swim you keep swimming straight and a little bit to the left and once you pass those two giant square blocks it's about a two or three minute swim from there. And yeah, it's really neat. There's a lot of fish there and it's just a lot of rusty old boat that has been there for, it seems like, centuries. Yeah, so definitely worth a visit as well. When you do go though, I would recommend if you have a wetsuit, wear a wetsuit. And if you don't, um, be prepared to get stung by some jellyfish because uh, we got stung quite a couple of times so when you all of a sudden feel like a burning pinch uh, somewhere on your body that's probably because you got hit by a jellyfish and around that place they kind of have a couple it hurts a little bit but it's not like you really feel a burning pain for ages but it's more like an annoying pinch so yeah but the, when there's a ton that's not enjoyable so if you have a wetsuit definitely wear one because that will protect you i didn't have one and i survived but after a while you really get annoyed by them and you just want to get out of the water and when you see them that completely freaks me out 
All right, then we have only one more left and that's my number one and that is probably if you know about this place you might have already missed it in the list because it is my favorite place to go snorkeling and that is at Playa Grande because at Playa Grande they have sea turtles and I absolutely love swimming with sea turtles. A couple of things that are worth mentioning because you might be wondering why are the sea turtles only at Playa Grande? This is because the fishermen clean their fish at this beach and they throw all of the fish waste into the ocean and that's what the sea turtles eat so the water is very dirty so but that's why the sea turtles are there what i see a lot of people do is they stay really close to the beach because that's where most of the sea turtles are but the water is very unclear there um, so you might actually not see them as well and it's very crowded there so i would definitely recommend going a little bit further where all the boats are because there's still a ton of turtles there as well and the water is just a lot clearer and you can see the turtles a lot better and there's just a lot more space and freedom and it's honestly the best experience you can actually buy a fish from uh, the fishermen that are cleaning uh, the fish and take it with you in the water and you can feed the turtles which is really cool please be aware um, that you're not supposed to touch the turtles or pet them um, because you do want to just keep them um, as wild as possible they're pretty used to humans already but you don't want them to get to one more thing that might be worth mentioning when you just go to a normal beach to snorkel what you can do is you fill up a bottle with bread and uh, soak it with a little bit of water and then uh, once you get into the water you can open the bottle up and let the bread out in the water and the fish will come and eat it which is pretty fun because then you can be surrounded by fish um, but yeah just don't do this too often just do it once to experience it i've actually not done it at all but um that's mostly also because i just forgot about it and didn't get to it but i also feel like you should just not feed wildlife because you want to keep wildlife wild i hope you enjoyed this video and when you have more cool snorkeling places that you feel like i've missed please leave them in the comments below i hope you can enjoy the underwater world because it's gorgeous especially in the caribbean where the water is so crystal clear. Have fun, love always, adventure often. All right, bye guys.